All right, so in this video, we're looking to apply a brick material to these four wall segments. Before, the floor was fairly easy. Uh, we changed the tiling and the direction all within the material settings, but we're going to find that that just won't work for these walls. So the first thing we're going to have to do is actually make the material. So if I come up to my materials, I'm going to right click scene materials, add material, and select V-Ray material. I'm going to rename it right away to brick. And I'm going to come into my diffuse options and select a map. I had already gone on to vraymaterials.de, which is a kind of site which carries a lot of user submitted materials. Uh, you can search through them. They have lots of different options here, and they're all free. You just have to sign up for the site. And the search feature gave me my brick. So if I searched brick here, I have lots of different options, and I picked uh, this white brick right here. So when I download that file, uh, it's given me a series of images. Again, I have to set bitmap and select my map location. Here I have four. Uh, the one I need right now is my diffuse map, which is the DIFF. I, I find that the better materials usually have you know, a larger number of layers that go kind of into the composite of, uh, of the final product. Here we're looking for the diffuse map, and we're going to bring in a couple more in a bit. So there's the diffuse map. Uh, we're adding the bump map. I'm going to set this to bitmap, select the map location. Here's the bump, it's easy. Um, set this to 0 0.02 again, and we can preview this brick. Uh, it's got some nice texture, it's looking pretty good. But one thing that came with this series is a displacement map. Now, displacement maps work kind of like bump maps, but they're meant for larger shifts in geometry. So you can see here that the, the bump map and the displacement map are definitely a little different. Some of these, uh, some of these bricks are angled and tilted uh, from black to white, which will cause the wall to look like it was assembled by hand, like these bricks were actually stacked up. So say OK. And again, a multiplier of 1 is way, way, way too strong. I'm going to do a 0.25 right now just to show you that when we update this preview, uh, the brick is really just kind of flying off of the sphere. Uh, it's just way too much, but we can see there's definitely shifts between each brick. So I'm going to come back in and make this match our bump map at 0 0.02. Apply that, update the preview, and you can see we have kind of an uneven texture, but it's enough that we're going to maintain the geometry of the wall. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the four pieces of wall. I'm going to right click and apply this material, and we can do a test rendering. And the thing we're going to find is that, um, first, the scale of the brick is just way too large. And second, the orientation of the patterning is different from wall to wall, which isn't going to work for us. You can see here it's running kind of up and down. The back wall seems to be correct. And then again on the side wall, we're back up and down again. And I think that has something to do with the way the material, or way the geometry in Rhino was made, just depending on how these boxes were created. But regardless of that, we're able to fix this with advanced mapping techniques. So with these four walls selected, I'm going to group them, and I'm going to lock them. I'm going to select all and hide everything else, and then type unlock to unlock my walls. So now I'm left with the grouped of four walls. Um, you, can, you remember that we simply changed the orientation of the floorboards in the material which is something we could definitely do here with the brick, coming back in and, and changing this rotation. We could even change the scale of it, but that's not going to resolve the issue that you know one runs this way and the other runs this way. And I don't really want to create a second material and have two different materials applied here just to resolve the orientation. But I can control all of that under object. Right now we'll, we have object properties, uh, but if we turn on and change that to texture mapping, uh, we're able to come in, actually show advanced UI, and add a new texture map to these to this group. Uh, if I click show mapping right now, we're not going to see anything, and that's because it's automatically set up to be surface. Each of these materials is mapped to each individual surface of this, you know, kind of uh, t uh, of this geometry. Uh, if I change that, I'm given a couple different options here. What we're going to do is box, and in a later tutorial, I'll walk through each of these. I turn on box and I've clicked show mapping, and you can see the mapping uh, texture mapping guide. It's this uh, dotted gray box that covers you know everything we have. Um, 
it's not perfectly aligned here, but it would probably work decently. I'm going to come down and actually change the rotation of the box, which I know I want to change around the Z, and I believe if I rotate it 19 degrees there. Now, kind of this box fits better around my geometry. And now the way to think about it is that this box is kind of specifying an orientation for the materials. Off of these faces, the nearest face here, this the back face, we're running this way, the side faces, we're running the length of it, and it's as if these things just kind of guide the material in place. So here, if we do a test rendering just of the walls, you can see already that the brick is running down the wall and then maintaining its continuity, turning and coming back. So it's exactly what we're looking for. The last thing I'm able to do here is change some of the size of the box. I can actually size it to the object, that's fine. Uh, and I can shift the box around if I wanted for some reason the, the, the brick to start at a certain level. I could change it here. I can also change the rotation of the box. But the thing I'm more interested here is the scale. So I'm going to come in and say uh, four and a half uh, repetitions, four and a half. And this was just trial and error to figure out that four and a half to me feels like the block, block size I was looking for. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. We'll do another test rendering of just this geometry. And you can see the scale of the block has already been reduced. The back wall wraps around just nicely, and we were come back on this side. Uh, right now it's really bright, but I know when I turn on the rest of my scene, that'll be blocked out. So let's show the rest of the geometry. Uh, I can click my objects again and then hide the mapping. I'm not really interested in seeing that all the time. And as I get in here, we can do another rendering. And we see that the brick has been mapped. Uh, I think the color is going to be much nicer. We're going to find one more issue that we need to resolve as this kind of comes to life. Let's see here. You can already tell that the texture is kind of, you know, exactly as I want it to be. Uh, I think the scene's looking really good. And here's the final pass of the rendering. Now there's one thing that stands out to me, uh, and, and I have kind of the light coming in from this large opening. You can see I don't have a piece of model on this side, so although I want the light to be coming in from the window here, and you can see my sun's actually pointed from the back, I'm getting a lot of light just flooding in from the, the open face of the building, so it's not really showing me what the space would truly be like. So in the next video, we're going to be looking at how to set up a, like a dummy material that would mask off this light, but still allow us to see in. And that'll be coming up just next.